Hey everybody, it's Mo Bunnell, your host here at Real Relationships, Real Revenue, and I've got James Barclay on the show today. He's CEO of Passel Inc., and they are a leading provider of ways that you can get your name out there, that you can post content digitally, and that you can do things in the digital world that, that add value and attract clients to you perfect person for this episode. And what I think is interesting about this one is we dig into uh, sort of James' past. He gives a little bit of a background about himself. Stick through that part because there is some amazing content out at the end of this episode where he gives some really great advice on what he's seen in helping hundreds and hundreds, I guess thousands actually, of deeply technical experts get their name out there digitally and add value in the digital world, and he tells you exactly how to do it. You need the context for his background for his life up front. Um, that's providing context, but the real meat of this is the last, is the back end of this episode. So stick around for that because it is really, really good. Now, if you want our best thinking on how you can interact with your clients when you're busy and deepen relationships very quickly, We've got a thought piece called High Impact Relationship Deepeners. You can get it right away. And all you have to do is go to Grow Big Playbook to sign up and download it. That's growbigplaybook.com. So head over there to get your High Impact Relationship Deepeners. Our clients are loving this thought piece. All right, here's James Barclay. Hey everybody, it's Mo Bunnell, your host here at Real Relationships, Real Revenue. I'm smiling from ear to ear because I have James Barclay. He's just one of the funniest and most deepest expert people that I know. And uh, James, you're CEO of Passel Inc., one of the leading providers of technology that helps people get their name out there on the internet, that helps them write posts, uh, get get the content out there, make it really, really easy for busy professionals. So. I'm excited to have you on the show. Here's our first question. James, I'm, and I'm actually really interested in this. When did you realize that business development was a good thing, that growth was great, that this was something that you wanted to sort of lean into a little bit? Sure. Um, gosh, that's a tough one, is it? It goes back a long time. So I was, I was 22 straight out of university, um, been traveling for a year around India and Nepal, got home, needed to earn a dollar had a look through the newspaper at the time at jobs and there was a conference organizer job and I thought I'm pretty good at organizing stuff. And ultimately when I went to the interview, I realized that conference organizing was all about persuading people that they should speak at your event for no money and then trying to sell tickets on the back of it. And, um, and I, I like the simplicity of it, but I really enjoyed the commercial aspect of it. I like the persuasion and essentially it was selling ideas. And, and the selling of ideas is what we ultimately always do is, is sell ideas um, and get somebody to believe in us. Yeah, I love that answer. And I didn't actually know that um, that story. It, it conjured up like maybe you brought that up at one point, but I had forgotten about it. So so you start selling ideas. You start you know, getting speakers lined up, which I'm sure was fun to meet people who are top notch speakers. And then you're obviously bringing trying to bring in people to attend the event and all that. So things progress and like, when did you realize, cause now you're like this deep technical expert, mm. you guys, while you make things simple, simple, the technology Passel provides is really, really complex, right? You make it easy to use, but there's a lot behind it. And you're CEO of the, of the US yep. based, based operations. So as, as you progress, like when did you realize now adding expertise with this idea of being great at growth was good? Okay. So You've asked for one minute answers and I might be more than one minute. So bear with, <laughs> That's bear okay. with. So conferences we were doing in the nineties and I was selling dodgy conferences in dodgy countries. So it's like India chemicals and Pakistan oil and gas and things like that, which, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure I would do now. Anyway, what we would, what we realized was the internet was a big thing in the nineties. Um, and what we started to do is sell conferences, like literally the internet for Great Britain and the internet for South Africa. Um, and then we started going down into the areas of the internet, like streaming media and digital distribution of music and all these things. And we had to build websites. And to build websites, you could at the time traditionally go, okay, we're gonna put a brochure on a website. We're just gonna talk about what we do. Cause we had, we're in a direct mail business, right? But we came up with, with these websites. We're like, well, that's boring. Why don't we talk about what's gonna be in the conference? all the time and then we could sell the conference on the back of the website so the website became a content site 
we didn't know it's called content. We called it e-news. We brought in journalists. We wrote stuff ourselves, but it was all about what the conference covered. And what we realized then was, well, what we built then were content websites back in the 90s to sell conferences. So our business was conferences, but what we did is built websites. So we were using the internet to sell stuff. And that became, that was fascinating. Um, the next firm that that business got sold and we, we, we another, the same guys that I work with at Passel were in that business. Now they're in, they're in a, they're, we were in a different business, which was software as a service for pictures on credit cards. Okay, and this is all linked, don't worry. Pictures on credit cards. And it was, you could put a picture of your dog, your cat, your kids onto your Wells Fargo card, your Capital One card. And that made yep. you spend more money on them, basically. But although you look like you're on Wells Fargo, that technology was ours, it was software as a service. At that point, we were like, we became experts in this ridiculous niche, right, of the internet, financial services, card products. And we were like, we know a lot about this. We should write a blog because it was blogging time. This was 2009, not even, actually 2005. And uh, we tried writing a blog and we just failed because you start with a blank screen and you go, right, what am I going to write about? What's my genius point? What's my thought yeah. leadership? And I did it once, right, and failed. We shot the blog, long and short story. We told that business was sold, and the guys who set up Passel, Adam and Tom, who were, who were in charge of that business, the, the software as a service business, they were like, we can't have been the only experts who were rubbish at showcasing our expertise online. You know, this must be a thing. And on the back of that, they built Passel. Okay, and yes. Passel is all about how do you use, how do you get the expertise out of your brain your niche knowledge and whether you're an insurance yes. or whether you're a consultant or whether you're a lawyer, you've got this ridiculous amount of knowledge in your head. Showcasing that online is crucial because that's where everyone's experiencing you, especially now with COVID. No one's going to your posh office. No one's no one's seeing your artwork and your lovely sofa. They're seeing you online. And so yep. that was anyway, I told you it was long. That's the long and short of it is how do you use then? How do you then showcase that expertise online? And then we're really excited about enabling and empowering those experts to be able to do that online showcase. Ah, so now I love so it's that's fun the story having, <laughs> now I love it. And uh and and I think having a British accent adds like 20%. Like it's a 20% <laughs> I need story. It. I need it. If, if somebody from Indiana where I grew up sold the same story, it just wouldn't be as good. But, so let's get to it. So I think this is really interesting for the audience. So now they understand your background, you're running this big organization uh, within the within the states. So our audience are deep technical experts, right? And they maybe heard this message. I need to get my name out there. I'm doing air quotes, quotes around that audio listeners. Or maybe they think, gosh, I want to write more. I want to um, influence people. I want to bring people to me because I've got thoughts in my head. What do I do? Mm -hmm. So give us right now, like go straight to it. What are the top three? I'm going to have you focus on three. What are the top three things an expert needs to know? to get their content out online in a way that works. Okay. Number one, do something, don't do nothing. And realize that you might not be great at it straight away. Okay, so you get, often when you get to a point of expertise, you're older, you're used to being brilliant. Don't worry about not being brilliant straight away. Just get there and do it. So do something, yep. not nothing. Second yep. one I would say is run an audit of LinkedIn of who you're connected to. It's very straightforward. You go to me, you drop down to privacy and you drop down to um, get my details and you'll find out who you're connected to. Audit it. Put that against who gives you money in the world. And if you're not linked in with the people who give you money because they're people, not organizations, then make sure you resolve that. Next is then regularly write, I would say, short, digestible content that's client relevant and that's timely and do that once a week, once a month, whatever it is, but do it. And and you don't need to write thousands and thousands of words. 300 words seems to outperform a thousand words in our experience. Yeah. Well, this is really great. So do something, not nothing. Audit who you're connected with and resolve it if you, if you have gaps. And then this idea of regularly write short and client-focused relevant content. So now let's double click on that. So you've worked with hundreds and hundreds of lawyers, professionals, consultants, um, what are you finding work the best for people that are writing content? Sure. Number one is make it really, it has to be really easy. Number one. So yeah. make, do it, do the simple, stupid stuff. Don't, don't overthink it. Um, get over your own imposter syndrome. Um, because, and, and don't outsource it, do it yourself. You wouldn't you wouldn't send someone else into a meeting for you physically, so you shouldn't you shouldn't pretend to be 
someone shouldn't be pretending to be you online. I'd say that, you know, that that, that, that would be the, the kickoff. <laughs> yeah. So I, obviously, Passel makes this really easy and, and we'll be soft about that, obviously, as we as sure. we talk to everybody, although I, well, I, Passel's awesome, folks. It really is. I, I use it. Um, but this idea of really easy, uh, you one of the things I've learned from you is not feeling like you have to create all the content yourself from scratch, but maybe uh, putting your own two cents or your own thoughts on top of another thought leader or just promoting um, another article or uh, something that just happened in the pellet courts or new regulations that are coming out or a new thought piece someone else at your firm wrote or even data or research that you just had coming out. But taking that and adding your own flavor on top of it and getting it out there, that can be a really easy way to do it. So your, your thoughts on sort of how to make this idea or, or how, to, how to make writing or publishing a regular habit? Sure. I think number one, don't think that you're suddenly going to be a journalist at the New York Times, that you need to learn a whole brand new skill. Yeah. Most of the folk we talk to, we mainly talk to lawyers um, in, in the commercial sense. They have 15 to 20 people in their world who give them 80 percent of their billable hours. And that's also true of a lot of consultants, people like in, in Deloitte and things like that. Um, picture one of them. You've known them for years. You've been to their family barbecues. They've been to your offices. You've taken them to the football. Picture them, write something that you know will resonate with them, but do it in a public space. So do it on your blog, do it on LinkedIn, wherever it is, and do that regularly. But just picture one of those people. Of course, the other thing to do is ask them what might be useful to them. Yeah. You know, you're on a chat with them. No one minds being asked, hey, what's what are you worried about? What do you see as an opportunity? What is it that, that we should be considering for you? Everyone's going to love those questions. So get those questions, get the answers, write them down and share them in a, in a public space like LinkedIn or on your blog um, and do that regularly. The other thing is if you can't make the link, the, the leap from doing nothing to writing a post, share your company's stuff, you know, share someone else's post and just write a couple of lines. This is interesting because interact is what I'm saying. Be, be digitally active as opposed to inactive because when you're very busy and you do nothing your clients and your prospects aren't thinking oh james is very busy he, he hasn't got time to be present online they're just not thinking about you because yeah. you're not present yeah hey one last question in this because i think I, I learned this from you and boy it has stuck with me for years i think i think you i learned this from you when you went through grow big public training i think i either taught that class it was long enough ago or actually popped in or whatever because i knew you were there and uh, there was a breakout you, you room. did the highlights you came in and did the glory yeah that's what i did it I was, was like, awesome yeah. <laughs> I <told some> stories. <laughs> oh i know it. i came by my, at meal time i was always there you came by um, but, uh, was happy hour <laughs> but i did drop in right when you were saying something and it hit me like a ton of bricks so just i just want you to elaborate on this because i think it's the perfect ending to this this episode and it's this, that, that most people, when they think about writing, they think about writing for everybody. And you, you already mentioned this a, a second ago, but I want you to go deeper on it. But you taught me write for one person, because what that does is it drives specificity. It puts you in the mind of one reader and likely if one reader or one audience member needs that thing, many more do. But if you try to write for the average of everybody, you end up with this milk toast. It doesn't help anybody. But if you actually think Sally Smith and you yeah. write for Sally, one of your clients or prospects, and you write it and you put that in the public domain, A, when Sally reads it, she's like, wow, this really connects. But there's likely lots of other people thinking about the same thing. So just go a little bit deeper on that. And I think that'll be the perfect ending to this episode. There's a couple of things there. Number one, coming back to those, you know, know, know where your money comes from. You know, wherever, if you're a lawyer or a consultant or you sell stuff, it doesn't matter. We're, we're there to make a dollar. Um, so know where your money comes from. Make sure that you're writing content that will resonate with those 15, those 20 people, that one person. Two reasons. Number one, they're much more likely to to have you as front of mind if you're doing that. You can you can send them that content and say, hey, he's thinking of you. Yep. So that's grand. Also, and more importantly, I think they are the most likely people to recommend and refer you. You know, you always talk about your fans, you know, building people to be your 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 your, your top fans, your, yep. your top raving fans, yep. Your raving fans. So 
if you can create a piece of content that's useful to them and they look good sharing it because it's useful, then they're going to recommend it to their people. And, and I always think of, uh, and I, I stole this, but the, the online world is the same as the offline world. We have, they reckon, five really, really close contacts, friends and family. You know, if buy a house, we're going to talk to them. 15 close friends, 45 in your friendship group, right? 150 in your wider friendship group, and you top out at the people you know at about 450. And they, they reckon that's that's it. And it goes way back, you know, to, to, to when Sapiens first started wandering around. <laughs> um, yeah. And the way this was described to me, and I think this is the one I shared with you, where it's morbid, is, you know, if, if I died, those five people would be crying, would, sorry, the five people would be holding my coffin, the 15 would be crying at my, at my, this is, this is a bit more, 15 would be, would be at my funeral crying. My 45 would be at my funeral. My, uh, uh, sorry, my, my 15 would know the funeral's on uh, and, and know when it is. The 45 would be, uh, would know the funeral, the, 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 the funeral was happening and the 150 and 450 would know I'm dead. I think, I think that's right. So, but it's, it's those core people. Now, what I do is when I write, I write for those 15 thinking of those 45 does that make sense yeah but i write for one person in the middle yeah and that's likely then to spread out a bit like a pebble dropping in water and the waves go out you know yeah. it's, it's all about spheres of influence yeah i hope i've explained that all right <laughs> and the crazy thing about that and it, it it hit me like a ton of bricks and completely has changed my writing um but when you write for those 15 i think the people resist i think people tentatively resist it because they're like well but i need to write for more than 15 people but the but the thing is there are a hundred X, a thousand X that many of those 15 people, and they're the ones you want to meet. So you write for this very specific persona and then it spreads like crazy. You're letting raving fans rave because those 15, like you said, are going to share posts, tell somebody, you know, those kind of things. Yeah. You're giving, you're giving your raving fans ammunition. I love it. Okay. Well, there, we ended a blog blog post with death and ammunition. I mean, what else? Or, I mean, a, <laughs> no, <podcast>. sorry. <laughs> yeah. Can't be better than that. All right. Hey, James, people are going to want more of your big brain, more of your thought leadership. I know you're open to having calls with people, things like that. Where should they go to, to connect with you? Sure. Find me on LinkedIn, James Barclay um, uh, on LinkedIn, Passel, Passel link, or you can go to Passel.net and find me or James at Passel.net. Any which way, but yeah, I'd love to hear from you. I love it. We'll put all those down in the show notes, everybody. So if you're driving, barreling down the highway, you can just come back to the episode and press a press a link and you'll be all set. James, thanks for being on the show. Everybody, don't forget to subscribe, follow, set all those notifications because your phone's going to explode because we got four more episodes coming with James Barclay and they're all going to be as good as this one. James, thanks for being on the show. Thank you very much. Wonderful to see you.